Question Time is a BBC topical debate television programme in the United Kingdom, based on the radio programme Any Questions? The show typically features politicians from at least the three major political parties as well as other public figures who answer pre-selected questions put to them by members of an audience selected on the basis of its political views and demographic. The independent production company Mentorn has made the program for the BBC since 1998. Question Time was presented by David Dimbleby until 14 December 2018. The show is currently broadcast on BBC One on Thursday evenings. It is sometimes shown on BBC World News, depending on events in the news, and has been shown on the US channel C-SPAN. Origins Question Time began on Tuesday, 25 September 1979, as a television version of the BBC Radio 4 programme Any Questions? Originally intended to have only a short run, the program became very popular and was duly extended. The guests on the very first show were Irish novelist Edna O'Brien, Derek Warlock, the Archbishop of Liverpool and politicians Teddy Taylor and Michael Foote. From 21 February 1980 the series moved to its current Thursday night slot and became fully networked within BBC, with Scotland and Northern Ireland broadcasting the series from this point onwards. Format Question time began with a panel of four guests, usually one member from each of the three major parties conservatives, Labour and Liberal Democrats and another public figure, for example non-governmental organisation directors, newspaper columnists, or religious leaders. In 1998, the panel was enlarged to five, with another non-partisan member or leading member of a fourth political party joining the panel. The presenter now sits in the middle and chairs the debate, deciding who can speak on the panel and bringing audience members into the discussion. Questions are submitted by the audience before the program goes on air. The program makers select some to put to the panel, who never know the questions before recording begins. During the program, the presenter calls on the relevant members of the audience to put their question to the panel and gives each member an opportunity to answer the question and respond to each other's points. Every audience member is asked to bring a question and those chosen are informed immediately prior to filming. Question time audiences are screened and selected in advance, on the basis of their replies to a questionnaire on an application form. Mandatory fields on the application form include the applicant's desired questions, voting intention, political party membership, occupation, ethnicity, and disability status. Usually, filming takes place earlier on the evening of broadcast, to ensure issues are as up-to-date as possible. For a brief period in the mid-1990s, the program used voting keypads to take a poll of the audience, who were stated to have been selected to provide a balanced sample compared with the nation as a whole. During general election campaigns, the program has taken a different format, with the party leaders appearing as single guests and fielding questions from the audience. The theme music was originally written by Stanley Myers. A rearranged this theme for Mikasa was created by Ben Foster and the current arrangement is by Mike Connaris. Presenters <laughs> 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 Topic. Robin Day Veteran newsman Sir Robin Day was the program's first chairman, presenting it for nearly ten years until June 1989. The program soon gained popularity under Day's chairmanship, with his quick wit and interrogation skills. His famous catchphrase when he had introduced the panel was, There they are, and here we go. The program was mainly filmed at the Greenwood Theatre in London on the south side of London Bridge. His last program as presenter on 12 July 1989 was broadcast from Paris, and Day was allowed to choose his own guests. Peter Sissons After Day retired, Peter Sissons took over and continued until 1993. After Day's departure the BBC decided to widen the program's appeal by moving it around the country. The programme also changed its London location from the Greenwood Theatre to the Barbican Centre. 
Sisson's tenure as Question Time chairman included three different editors. There were several problems during filming, including a bomb scare during a live recording, which resulted in the program being taken off the air, and the death of an audience member who collapsed while recording. However, the program continued to enjoy good ratings during this period, with one notable addition broadcast on the day of Margaret Thatcher's resignation on the 22nd of November 1990, which featured two different panels over two editions. Topic David Dimbleby David Dimbleby was chosen to succeed Peter Sissons as the program's presenter in 1994, after the BBC decided to hold two pilot show auditions between Dimbleby and Jeremy Paxman with two different audiences and two different panels. For a brief period under Dimbleby's chairmanship in the mid-1990s there were a number of variations to the format, including the audience using voting keypads to take a poll of the audience at the end of the program, and Dimbleby getting out of his seat at intervals to question the audience. Dimbleby presented the program for 25 years, the program's longest-serving presenter, until his final program, aged 80, on 13 December 2018. Topic. Fiona Bruce In December 2018 it was announced that Fiona Bruce would be the new presenter. Topic. Guest presenters There were several guest hosts during Day's tenure, including Bob McKenzie (1980–81), Sir Ludovic Kennedy (1982–83), Donald McCormick (1985), who was the most frequent replacement, hosting at least nine times, and Sue Lawley (1985–87). Bernard Levin presented the show twice in place of day, making him the only person to present and appear as a panelist in the program's history. John Humphreys hosted the 12th of November 2009 edition when Dimbleby was taken to hospital after being knocked unconscious by a rearing bullock at his farm. Nick Robinson hosted Question Time on the 5th of June 2017, Alita's special, after the show was moved for news coverage following the London Bridge attack and Dimbleby was unavailable, already preparing for election night coverage. Editors Charlie Courtauld was editor from 1998 to 2000, leaving to join The Independent on Sunday as its comment editor. Nick Pisani was appointed in 2000, resigning abruptly in May 2005 after news was leaked that he had been offered a job as David Cameron's head of TV presentation. Ed Havard was made acting editor in May 2005 after Nick Pisani left. During his time in charge the BBC offered a seat on the panel to Nick Griffin in 2009. He left when the programme's production base moved to Glasgow. Gil Penlington, the ITV News political producer, was made interim editor in May 2008, when the BBC gave Ed Havard a year-long sabbatical. Nikolai Gentchev, a former output editor of BBC Radio FA's Today programme, has been the editor of Question Time since March 2011. Interactivity SMS contributions Viewers of the show can submit comments to the show via SMS, until October 2012 a selection of those comments was posted on CFAX. Comments were edited and put to air by a team of four journalists based at Television Centre in London. The system displayed one message at a time, and usually showed several tens of messages throughout each hour-long episode. The system's popularity sprang from its mix of serious and light-hearted comments. On average, around 3,500 texts are received during each hour-long program, although 12,000 texts were once recorded in one frantic program in 2004. Quantity of texts is generally related to the composition of the panel. Twitter On 24 September 2009, the show launched its Twitter presence and the show's presenter has regularly announced its presence on Twitter since late 2009. Using the Twitter ID, at BBC Question Time, it tweeted using the hash BBCQT hashtag. By early 2010, this had become one of the UK's most active.
Twitter backchannels to a TV show. At BBC Question Time claimed 10,000 tweets had been sent around the show on 7 October 2010. The show had over 40,000 followers on Twitter by October 2010 and this exceeded 50,000 on the evening of 3 February 2011. On 9 June 2011, Question Time became one of the most tweeted about shows of the week in the UK, with 5,000 tweets during the programme, with tweeting continuing through to the next day. In addition to the more sober analysis of the discussion, Question Time also has a parallel Twitter backchannel based on the spoof account Dimblebot, purportedly a robot version of Dimbleby, where the entire premise of the program is claimed to be a demonstration of Dimbleby's ability to defeat the panel. It became clear during the riot special that David Dimbleby knows of the existence of Dimblebot and the associated Dimbledance. The at BBC Question Time account now has 408,000 followers. Topic. Location When chaired by Sir Robin Day, Question Time was almost always made in London, at the Greenwood Theatre on the south side of London Bridge. After his departure the BBC decided to try to widen the programme's appeal by moving it around the country. Currently the programme is presented from a different location each week, usually in the UK, with a local studio audience each time. The makeup of the panel is usually altered to reflect part of the country where it is filmed. When in Scotland, for example, the programme may invite a Scottish National Party MP or MSP onto the panel. Some editions of the programme have been broadcast outside of the UK, such as in Sydney, Australia in October 1999, before the Republic referendum, and in the United States for a general election special for the 1992, 2004, and 2008 US elections. Special editions have also been broadcast to coincide with the G8 conference meetings. A 7 July 2005 edition was broadcast from Johannesburg in South Africa, coinciding with the G8 summit in Glen Eagles. It just so happened that this edition was broadcast on the same day as the suicide bombings on the London Underground and the London bus in Tavistock Square. An edition was also broadcast the following year from Moscow, Russia, in time for the G8 conference in St. Petersburg. In March 2005, another overseas edition of the program was shown from Shanghai, China, and a program from Paris, France, was broadcast in May 2005, three days before the French referendum on the EU constitution. Question Time has filmed in notable political buildings and prisons, airports and universities, performing arts venues and cathedrals. These include, the political buildings at City Hall, the Scottish Parliament, and Westminster Hall, cathedrals in Liverpool, St. Paul's, and Winchester. The universities of Birmingham, Leeds Beckett, and York. Having also filmed at the CBSO Centre, Easterhouse, Heathrow Airport, the Sage Gateshead, and Wormwood Scrubs Prison. Topic. Production The show is recorded at different venues throughout the UK. Although, as part of plans to relocate BBC production around the UK, the main office of the programme will move to BBC Scotland in Glasgow, the itinerant nature of the programme will continue. Topic. Episodes Topic. Famous editions In early 1981, David Steele declared his support in principle for a marriage between the Liberal Party and any party which might be formed by the Gang of Four. David Owen, who was also on the program, said he could see advantages in an electoral alliance between them. This prefigured the period 1983-1987 when Owen and Steele were leaders of the SDP, Liberal Alliance and tension grew over whether their deal was a prelude to a merger of the parties or merely a temporary electoral pact. During the 1983 election campaign, Conservative Foreign Secretary Francis Pym was asked by an A-level student named Andy Davis about the implications of the Conservatives winning the election with a landslide victory. He began by casting doubt on the likelihood of this happening and then observed, I think landslides on the whole don't produce successful governments. Margaret Thatcher later wrote that the remark, struck a wrong note. People drew the inference that he did not want us to win a large majority. 
After the election won by the Conservatives on a landslide she sacked him as Foreign Secretary, partly because of his gaffe. In a 1984 edition, Alan Clark, a junior government minister at the time, was openly critical of a government decision to buy a foreign-made missile system, prompting guest host Sue Lawley to ask the audience, "'Is there anyone here who wishes to defend the government on this, because its minister doesn't? A 1994 edition was notable for a confrontation between Jeffrey Archer and the historian David Starkey over the age of homosexual consent. After arguing that 18 should be the age of consent, Archer was attacked by Starkey who told him, "'Englishmen like you enjoy sitting on the fence so much because you enjoy the sensation." The program broadcast on 13 September 2001, which was devoted to the political implications of the 11 September 2001 attacks, featured many contributions from members of the audience who were anti-American, expressing the view that, "...the United States had it coming." The BBC received more than 2,000 complaints and later apologized to viewers for causing offense, stating that the edition should not have been broadcast live, but rather should have been recorded and edited. In 2002, the editor of Private Eye, Ian Hislop, made an open attack on Geoffrey Archer, who had been imprisoned for perjury, when his wife Mary Archer was a fellow panelist. She was noticeably angry that the issue had been raised and criticized Hislop after the recording had finished. In March 2007, an Iraq special was broadcast, featuring Tony Benn, Benazir Bhutto, Day Brown, Liam Fox, Charles Kennedy and, via video link from Washington, D.C., John R. Bolton. The episode is particularly memorable for the clashes between Benn and Bolton. On the 11th of October 2007, former editor of The Sun newspaper Kelvin McKenzie appeared on the program in Cheltenham and launched an attack on Scotland. During a debate about tax, Mackenzie claimed that, "...Scotland believes not in entrepreneurialism like London and the South East Scots enjoy spending it money, but they don't enjoy creating it, which is the opposite to down south." The comments came as part of an attack on Prime Minister Gordon Brown who Mackenzie said could not be trusted to manage the British economy because he was, "...a Scot," and a "...socialist," and insisting that this was relevant to the debate. Fellow panelist Chuka Umana from the think tank Compass called his comments, "...absolutely disgraceful," and booing and jeering were heard from the Cheltenham studio audience. The BBC received 350 complaints and Mackenzie's comments drew widespread criticism in both Scotland and England. On 3 July 2008, it was reported that the BBC Trust's editorial complaints unit had cleared the programme of any wrongdoing. Question Time then proceeded to broadcast the following question from Nick Hartley as part of the program on the same evening. After the media coverage of Andy Murray's rise and fall, are we now to infer that the English resent the Scots more than the Scots resent the English? Mackenzie reappeared on the program in Cardiff on 17 May 2012. After he was elected to the European Parliament, Nick Griffin the leader of the British National Party was invited onto Question Time for the first time, to appear on of October 2009. The decision led to controversy and political debate. Hundreds of people protested outside BBC Television Centre as the edition was filmed, six people were arrested after 25 protesters forced their way into the main reception. The edition attracted 8 million viewers, and also drew a large number of complaints as a result of its content. Griffin himself said that he would make a formal complaint to the BBC for the way he believed he was treated by the show's other guests and the audience, who he described as a lynch mob. An edition aired on 19 May 2011 was recorded at Wormwood Scrubs Prison in London. The episode was the first to feature prisoners as part of the audience, while panelists included Justice Secretary Ken Clark who attempted to defend controversial remarks he had made earlier in the week about rape sentencing. A special edition of the program was aired on the 11th of August 2011 following the outbreak of rioting which had occurred during the previous weekend and earlier that week. Question Time had been off air for its annual summer break at the time and the edition was a scheduled at short notice due to the English riots. An appearance by George Galloway on the edition of 5 February 2015 recorded in Finchley gained much negative comment before the broadcast. Inviting Galloway, a politician who has been outspoken about Israel, onto the program was thought to be provocative and insensitive because Finchley has a large Jewish minority. 
Galloway, who was heckled during a discussion about antisemitism, thought he had been defamed by a question posed to him, which insinuated that he should share some of the blame for a rise in antisemitic incidents during 2014. On the 23rd of November 2017, the program was shortened because an audience member became ill and could not be safely moved. Topic: <laughs> Audience figures. Audience figures for Question Time are usually around 2.7 million. The highest audience figures to date were recorded when Nick Griffin of the BNP appeared in an episode on the 22nd of October 2009, the audience reaching 8.3 million viewers. On the 14th of May 2009, Question Time discussed the EMPS expenses row, with audience members heckling guest panelists Menzies Campbell and Margaret Beckett, the Labour MP, who was booed by the audience for insisting that her expenses were her privilege. The TV audience reached 3.8 million, 3.4 million people watched in 2003 at the start of the war on Iraq. Topic similar programs Until 2010, BBC One Northern Ireland replaced Question Time with the more local debate show Let's Talk at least once a month hosted by Mark Carruthers, but this show has been axed and brought under the Spotlight brand. It is now shown once a month on Tuesday night with Noel Thompson. BBC One Knee have their own political show called The View. This is broadcast live from 10.35 p.m. to 11.05 p.m., presented by Mark Carruthers, and is followed by Question Time. If Question Time is made in Northern Ireland. BBC World produces an Indian version of the programme for such viewers The Irish broadcaster RTE produced a similar show, Questions and Answers, which ran from 1986 to 2009, and was replaced by The Frontline, which is of a similar format in March 2010. Dermot O'Leary hosted a spin-off edition of the show, which was broadcast on BBC Three. It was called First Time Voters Question Time, and the show was aimed at first-time voters. This version of the program was later commissioned on a permanent, monthly basis on BBC Three, to now be hosted by Richard Bacon, and retitled Young Voters Question Time. He was replaced by Jake Humphrey then by Rick Edwards with Tina Dehealy, and the show was renamed Free Speech which goes out every month. In 2007 the BBC commissioned The Big Questions, a new program with a similar format to Question Time, which focuses on ethical and religious issues. It is broadcast on BBC One on Sunday mornings between 10 a.m. and 11 a.m. Both programmes are produced by Mentorn Media. In 2008, the Australian Broadcasting Corporation launched a similar, Australian version of the programme, called Q&A. Airing live weekly, it has become a critical success, achieving extremely positive ratings for the ABC in Australia, with a wide audience from a range of demographics not all of which are normally noted for their interest in the Australian political scene. In 2011 Azerbaijan launched its own version of the programme. Open Talk Azerbaijani, ASIC Soaped is a weekly debate ANSTV television programme in Azerbaijan, based on Question Time. The show features political leaders as well as other public figures. Open Talk is presented by Sevin Osmanchizi. Topic: <laughs> Schools Edition. Several schools editions have been broadcast. On the 20th of June 2005, with a panel of Tony Benn, Justine Greening, Lembit Opic, June Sarpong, and Otis Ferry. On 6 July 2006, with a 20-year-old student joining David Miliband, Richard Maddeley, Lord Coe and Julia Goldsworthy. On 5 July 2007, an 18-year-old student joined a panel of Ed Miliband, Sayida Warsi, Davina McCall and Douglas Murray. On 9 July 2009, one of the panelists was an 18-year-old student. Other panelists were Andy Burnham, Jeremy Hunt, Sarah Teetha and Shami Chakrabarti.